family of EC. Are you ready to experience the goodness of God? Are you ready to worship the goodness of God? If you are, let lift up the name of Jesus. Praise God. I'm so glad to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, we're going to talk about being a friend of God. Is anybody thankful that you're a friend of the living God? If you want to, you can come on up and join us here at the front. We're going to lift our hands. We're going to clap and we're going to sing. We serve a good God. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. Y'all saying, is it true? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me. Come on, lift your hands and sing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Come on and sing. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. Thank you, Jesus. He said, who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me. That you hear me. Every single time I call. When I call. Is it true? Is it true? Yes. Is it true that you are thinking of me? Lord, how you love me. Somebody say it's, it's a with all of your heart. It's we declare, say, I am a friend. I am a friend of God. I'm your friend. Sing it again, say, I am a friend of God. I'm a friend. If you're thankful to be his friend today, why don't you just open up your mouth and tell him, Hallelujah, we bless you, Lord. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. Oh, we love you, Jesus. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. Come on and sing that again, God Friend of God, I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. He calls me. There you go, we see you belong to him. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I'm your 
church we're so glad that you're here you could have been anywhere else thank you for hanging out with us you may be seated at this time and as you're seated we have VIPs in the house make some noise for our first time visitors absolutely we are so thrilled to have you and I want to let you know that right after our worship experience, we have a special guest reception just for you. We wanna to get to know a little bit more about you and that way you can also know a little bit more about us. Amen, and if you arrive first time visitors, you should have received a connection card. We wanna stay connected to you, amen? And this is the first step to do so. So please, if you don't have one, get one, fill one out and you'll let, we'll let you know exactly what's happening here at EC. That's right. And speaking of staying connected, have you downloaded the app? Yes, we love the app here at EC. It's an amazing way to stay connected, know exactly what's happening, what's going to happen. Also amazing resources. So if you haven't, check it out. You can download it super easy on the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. Someone say dessert auction. Dessert auction. We need our baking kings and queens to come from hiding, y'all. It's time. We have a delicious fundraising event. And here it is, y'all. We want to be able to give a hundred frozen turkeys. Make some noise for Thanksgiving coming up. Our extraordinary membership. We are whipping up the best, most delectable desserts. Uh, from cakes, from pies, bring it all y'all. We want you all to come. Um, it's gonna be awesome. Join us for a sweet time and let's make a big impact together. Amen, Bella? Amen, Amen. I'm excited. And I just wanna let you know, don't forget, every Wednesday we have our Midweek Bible Connection. It happens at 7.30 every Wednesday. Don't miss it. We have an amazing series going on right now. And so, and it's the best way to get kind of recharged throughout the week, connect with your EC fam and listen to the word of God. Amen. He at EC, we're all about connection. Get up right now. You have 90 seconds to talk to someone, show them the love of Jesus Christ and express that extraordinary love. 90 right. seconds, y'all.
All right, all right. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. And now go ahead and make your way back to your seat. Yes, we're going to get started. I got some fun news to share with you, y'all. Guess what? E-Groups is back in action. Yes, if you don't know, E-Groups is our small group ministry that's designed for you to find connection with others and find freedom in Jesus Christ. And so the semester will actually begin that second week of September. But guess what? It's open now to register, to request to join a group. It's filling up fast, y'all, like real fast. So make sure you do that probably in the next 24 hours to guarantee a slot for yourself, okay? Now, if you don't mind, do me a favor. Go ahead and open your phone. Go to the EC app that you've already got downloaded. Very good. Now, when you open up the app, you'll see a little icon that says small groups. I want you to click on that. Once you open that page, just scroll all the way to the bottom. It's going to say click here for current groups. And so we're going to walk through those groups that we have available for you this semester. We've got a few classics and a couple new ones for you. Uh, the first one, of course, is our midweek Bible Connection watch party hosted by Miss Joyce. Y'all show them some love. She is always throwing a party at her crib. And so if you want to watch midweek Bible Connection with her, sign up for that. We have Financial Peace, another fun one. I'm actually facilitating that one this semester. And so if you just want to save some money, get out of debt, and really just make some moves for your future, this is a a great series for you to join. Um, we also have Through the Bible with Sarah Part 2. Now, last semester, it was the most popular group at EC. And so if you want to get into the Word, not just flip a few pages, but get all of in the Word, you want to join that group 100%. We've got Home Economics, another classic by Karen Hackett and Sharda. They'll be leading that right here at EC, so that'll be a lot of fun. You can sign up for that, ages 15 to 45 for that one. So if you're in that range, go for it. We've got Battlefield of the Mind. That's hosted by Raul, another classic. If you just got a lot going on mentally, you want to figure out how to find freedom in Jesus Christ, go ahead and join that one. Now we have two new e-groups, y'all. The first one is called You Can Do This, and that's hosted by none other than Pastor Akil. Y'all show him some love. Yes, and it'll be actually hosted right at his house. If you want to get a little quality time with your pastor, that's a great one to join, and you can just really discover more about you and just your future in Christ in that group. And last but not least, we have our very first food tour by Edgar and Sarah. They'll be facilitating that one. So if you want to just break bread with some folks here at EC and get that connection, it's a great group for you. Now, I have seen incredible enthusiasm of people just signing up for multiple groups, and that's that's awesome. I love that. Many of these groups do have a cap. So I'm going to encourage you just to find your top two favorite groups and stay in those. And that'll be amazing. So everyone else can participate. Amen. Y'all excited for e-groups? Let's go. Let's go ahead and transition to our time of giving. Let's show some love to Patricia. Praise God. As we enter into this time of giving, the first thing you guys can do is join Stephen's Financial PC Group so you can learn how to better steward your finances in order to give. But the second thing, I wanted to share a verse with you. John 15, 13 says, no greater love has no man than this, than to lay down his life for his friend. And here at EC, we declare that we're a loving church and we go through whatever means so that people can hear the gospel. We lay down our lives so that the gospel can be preached and so that lives can be changed. And sometimes it takes a sacrifice and we'll do whatever it takes. So that giving is part of that. And sometimes we have to make a sacrifice, but it's for the gospel and people's lives can be transformed just the way ours was. We need to see it happen for other people too. Amen. So if you could join me in standing as we give, there are a number of ways you can give. Um, via e-transfer, you could give via credit or debit at Guest Central or right now in person. Um, and as you turn your attention to the screen, we also make a faith-filled declaration every week. So let's say it in faith. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given to me, pressed down, shaken together and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today in your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked and the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour blessings upon me that there is not enough room to receive. In you, I have no lack. 
My giving spreads the gospel for salvation, hope for the hurting, and helps ordinary people experience extraordinary life in Jesus. I give today because I believe his kingdom has come in my city. God, you provide buildings, property, lands, and open doors for the harvest. My city will experience great joy, praise God. I declare that my whole family is saved and walking with God. I declare divine health and favor, abundance and blessing. I'm blessed coming in and going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe it, go ahead and believe it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I love the presence of God. Does anybody in here love the presence of God? In his presence, the Bible says, is fullness of joy. In his presence, there's power. In his presence, there's healing. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Thank you for, for shouting that. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And in this place right now, the presence of God is here. His presence is everywhere. I told my kids when they were little, said, you know what? If you look underneath the kitchen table, the Spirit of God is there. If you open the refrigerator door, the Spirit of God is there. He's with you in your car. He's with you at nighttime when you're all alone. He's with you when you're happy. He's with you when you're sad. He's with you here today. And today's a very special time because we've gathered together in his name. And the Bible says that when we do that, he is in the midst of us, right? So I don't know about you, but I want the Spirit of God to break out in me. I don't want to leave here like I came. I want to be challenged by the power and the presence of God to be closer to Him. I want to be challenged by the Word of God that's about to come forth to be transformed. So we're going to sing a song we probably all know. And if you don't know, the lyrics will be on the screen. You can learn it as we sing. It's called Spirit Break Out. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we want you to break out, God. Oh, Jesus, we need you, Lord, today. Yes, we do. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Our Father, all of heaven knows your name. Sing louder. Let this place erupt with praise. Can you hear? 
impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. Lord, you're so good. And you're here right now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we love you today, God. I'm here for you, Jesus. Nobody else but you, Lord. Yes, nobody else. newfound faith I will trust every word you say all my fears I'm laying down at your feet I will trust in your grace that could not be earned walk through the fire and not be burned all my doubts have lost their sound to or thank why don't you let him know you trust him come on no matter what you're facing I want you to know you're in good hands 
I want you to know that God's got you. God will keep you. He'll sustain you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. I want you to know you might feel like you're at your wit's end, but that's a good place to be because God can step in and do a miracle. If you feel like you have no strength, I've got good news. I'm telling you, in your weakness, his strength is made perfect. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus, and we give you glory. If he's brought you out before, he can do it again. We know who you are. You are God of the impossible. That means he's a miracle-working God. Miracle-working God. And I'm just going to challenge you. I'm a faith preacher. He is a God of faith. But I want you to know, I never want you to forget this. God responds to your hunger and your faith. God responds to hunger and he responds to faith. I don't know what you're facing. I'm not selling wolf tickets, but according to the word of God, I want you to know that if you have an illness, no matter what the illness may be, you can leave healed in Jesus' name. And I know you might be thinking, well, I'm to, I don't care if it's a common cold. I don't care if it's a migraine. I don't care if it's cancer. I'm not minimizing any of those. I'm just telling you that God we serve is bigger. I'm telling you he's able. Praise God. Praise God. And so I just want to encourage you this afternoon. You're in the right space at the right time. I believe God is going to challenge us and God is doing a wonderful work. How many of you just love our E-Kids, those between the age of 2 through 11? Come on and make some noise. They're ready. We're ready for them. They're going to go downstairs and learn the Word of God in relevant, fun, engaging ways. And we celebrate that. I'm going to ask that you remain standing for just a moment. Uh, my name is Akil Thompson. And I'm the pastor here at Extraordinary Church, and we believe we are the perfect church for imperfect people, and we are so glad that you're here today. Uh, all of our guests, thank you for coming. I want to personally invite you to join us downstairs. We're going to have a guest reception. It's a wonderful way for us to connect with you. Praise God. We have a few declarations that we like to make, but before we get started, I have a, just a quick announcement. And I'm going to ask my media team, push pause on that countdown. It's helpful, praise God. But I need every, every second I can get when I'm preaching. Thank you, Lord. They got me on a time limit. You, you know it, praise God. Noel's like, yeah, we, you need it, praise the Lord. Listen, we've got a brand new resource that's available via the church app. If you've not yet downloaded the church app, you want to go ahead and uh, do that. You'll notice the pray first. It's a great resource that guides you through biblical methodologies of prayer. And so how many of you want to grow in your prayer life? Praise God. Yes, yes, amen. Well, I, I want to encourage you, praise God, and let you know that if you want to grow in your prayer life, this is a great resource to do so. This is the year of grow at Extraordinary Church, not just numerically, but internally. We want you to grow in spirit. And so this book is available in print. It cost us $15 to produce it. It was completely designed in-house. It's free via the app, but many of us like to write things down or make journals, and we've got all that space in there. For a $10 investment, for a $10 donation, you can get one of these books. All you need to do is stop by Guest Central. You can grab that at the conclusion of our worship experience today. Uh, $10, all you need to simply do is this. You'll, when you're at Guest Central, don't do it before, but when you're at Guest Central, you'll make a donation either via our app and you'll just use this category. You'll see the Pray First or the Pray First booklet. Select that category, make the $10 donation. Otherwise, you can do it via e-transfer or cash. They just need to make sure for accountability purposes that we've got that squared away. So this is going to be a blessing to you, and we're thankful. Shout out to our creative team. They've done a great job with this. Praise God. Amen. Do me a favor. We believe that we are, uh, I make these declarations by faith. We believe we're the fastest growing church in Canada, reaching the world, praise God. We also believe we're the most loving church on the planet. We're going to love you big, and there's nothing you can do about it, praise God.
but we also believe and love the word of the Lord. And I want you to do me a favor. Open up your Bibles. If you have a physical Bible, that is amazing. If you don't, it's just as cool that you have a digital Bible. Open that up on your phone, if you will. And if you don't have a digital Bible, but you've got a smartphone, uh, I'm telling you without a Bible on your smartphone, your phone is dumb. You got a dumb phone. But once you download the Bible on your smartphone, on that phone, that dumb phone, that thing just got an upgrade. Praise God. That thing got smart real quick. Thank you, Jesus. The psalmist said that I'm smarter or wiser. He said, wiser than all the ancients because of your statutes. Look at the Bible, lift it up in the air, lift your phone up in the air that's got the Bible app open and repeat after me, this is my Bible. Now you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta like appropriate that thing. You gotta act like, Jamie, you gotta act like you got your own order of wings and gifted you talking about some, can I have some? You know what I'm talking about, why? Mary men know what I'm talking about. This, this is my wings. These are my french fries. Let's try that again. This is my Bible. It is the word of God. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. And I can be what it says I can be. Praise God. If you believe that, look at your neighbor. Tell them, I'm going to be what God said I can be. Look at your other neighbor. Tell them, you're going to be what God said you can be. Praise God. Open up that Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm going to be reading out of the NIV. And I'm going to, this is a two-part sermon. I'm going to give you a little bit of a recap for about 15 minutes from last week, and then I'll continue on. But I'm continuing in the same thought. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 through 18. When you got it, say, I got it. Praise God. We, we're ready today. We're ready. We do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. We, however, will not boast beyond proper limits, but will confine our boasting to the sphere of service God himself has assigned to us a sphere that also includes you. We are not going to go too far in our boasting as would be the case if we had not come to you. For we did get as far as you with the gospel of Christ. Neither do we go beyond our limits by boasting of work done by others. Our hope is that as your faith continues to grow, our sphere of activity among you will greatly expand so that we can preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. I want you to understand how they're measuring the progress. They're measuring it by people. I want you to see that. They were talking about this fear that includes you and that the activity, if they grow, the gospel is going to grow beyond you. So, for we do not want to boast about work already done in somebody else's territory, but let the one who boasts boast in the Lord for it is not the one who commends himself who is approved but the one whom the Lord commends and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to preach the second part of this message called the theology of limitations the theology of limitations really quickly I'm going to pray and you're going to be seated but here's what I want you to do I want you to just say you know what I'm going to really lean in to what God is doing and at the conclusion of this we're going to have an altar call and that's an opportunity for you if you'd like to come to this space right up here for prayer no matter what you have need of if you would like prayer we have a ministry team that will be glad to pray with you and believe God will meet that need let's pray father we love you I'm thankful for what you're doing in this space and in this place I pray for fresh oil to be upon each of us an anointing Lord a supernatural empowerment to help us teach and to uh, preach your word to receive your word God with gladness we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus name somebody say amen amen you may be seated unto the Lord now at extraordinary church we believe in 
Uh, we are very supportive, as you can tell. We are an engaging church community. We're going to celebrate uh, the presence of God. We're going to celebrate and respond to the word of God. And I want you to know that it is appropriate if something resonates with you and you're like, man, that was good. I'm going to clap my hands unto the Lord. You can do so. If you want to stand and get behind the preaching, you can stand up and lay, wave your hand and say, my God, that was good. If you want to sit there and say nothing, don't do that. Praise God. Amen. Do anything but that. Now, talking about that, you are not called to do everything. I am not called to do everything. And so we have to understand that we're not called into everything. As a matter of fact, how many of us know that you can be doing the most when you're doing things beyond your limits? We have to recognize our limits. You're not called to do everything, and let me give you some comfort. That is okay. Somebody can just kind of let a go, let an exhale out, if you will, because what we need to do is embrace our God-given boundaries and focus on our God-given assignment. We get in trouble when we try to do things God hasn't called us to do. There is a distinct difference between the will of God and the will of man. And what I want to happen for many of us here, if not all of us, is to be set free of the expectations that people put on us and we'll run freely and clearly and with confidence in what God has called us to do. I want you to know, let me just tell you, the will of God will not burn you out. The will of God will not frustrate you. It will challenge you. It will grow you. But the will of God will not destroy you. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to make everything la di da -di, we like to party. Y'all don't know nothing about that, praise God. We don't cause trouble. Anyway, I didn't grow up in church, praise God. But what am I telling you is, it's not about, oh, this plush life, if you will. But what it is, what I am trying to convey is God wants us to embrace the limitations that he has placed upon us in this season. For several reasons. One, the obvious. He is God and we are not. It's important that we understand that. When we understand our limitations and we understand that he is the God of the universe, the omnipotent one, the omniscient one, the omnipresent one, the all-being, all-knowing, all-loving, all-wise God, there's nobody like him, nobody to his right or to his left. He is the one who holds the universe in the palm of his hands. When we know his role, we know ours. And our role is to know, you ever seen somebody, you can, isn't it, isn't it kind of concerning when you're driving on the road and you're kind of comfortable and then somebody's kind of leaning over? And you're like, well, wait a second, maybe they're not going to keep leaning and get, and, and you're like, man, they're they, they, they coming into my lane. And, and what's the first thing we do? Beep, beep. And then what do we do? When we get up to them, we're like, I mean, some of us, some of us are quick to mean mug. We be frustrated. This happens when we get out of our lane. This happens when we get out of our limitations. And so when we when when people do this, it would be interesting. It would be it would be crazy. What if they look back at us and we're like, I can drive anywhere I want. I can drive in your lane, my lane, in the middle of it. No, 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 they can't, they can't do that. You would think, are they intoxicated? Are they distracted? What, what, what's going on? It is a risk, not only to them, but to everybody else on the road. You've got to understand that when you get beyond your limits, the limits that God has placed upon you, then you need to understand you are a risk to everybody else. I know you're like, ooh, what is he talking about? What am I telling you is stay in your lane. Look at your neighbor, tell him stay in your lane. Now, look at them like they drove into your lane and you're trying to check them. Stay in your lane. Mean mug them. That's the only time you can mean mug somebody. Cassandra is excited. She over there mean mugging Stephen. <laughs> Praise Andre, check her, man. Stay in her lane. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. 
No, but we have to stay in our lane. Let me, let me give you an example of what, what I want you to understand is sometimes God has called us to things. And uh, I'll, I'll give you just a very natural one. And, and seasons teach us this. But when Sarah and I use this, and for all of our mothers, they will understand this. Before you were with child, you could move at a different cadence, a different rhythm, different demands, uh, different pressures. You could engage in all of those things. And when we were in youth ministry, we were serving as the youth pastors. We learned that Sarah was with child and we were so excited. Uh, I was like, I was ready for twins. I was going to take twins like every, praise God. We, what were the names we had? Uh, we don't know. We had Naya, uh, Naya, uh, Naya Lee and something else. What was it? It was another name. She don't, don't ask her. I can't fool with her. When we got married two weeks later, she, the Lord didn't get me started. She couldn't even remember our, our, when we got married. Praise God. So, uh, I said, when, when, yeah, it wasn't very memorable, was it? Praise God. <laughs> so, it's been a long time, yeah, she said, been a long, hard road, praise God. Y'all pray for us. We're still here by the grace of God. You just stay in your lane, no, I'm just kidding. So, she could do a whole lot of different things and had different energy levels. When we learned she was with child, she could not do those same things at the same pace, at the same clip, endure the same demands, navigate the same challenges, negotiate, work full-time, be in full-time youth ministry, do all the things that we were doing, and that's not how that worked. We had to realize, oh, wait a second, she's sleeping for two, she's eating for two, she's living for two, and we had to get in rhythm with that. Does that make sense? We had to embrace the limitations when she would go and try to go, and then all of a sudden her body would say, stop. If she didn't stop, not only would she be at risk, but Mia would have been at risk. This is what happens when we operate beyond our limitations that God has set in our lives, and this is why he says, I'll make you lie down. I'll make you lie down if we're not careful. And so what I want us to understand is we need to recognize our limits. The ocean stays within its shores, reminding us that it respects boundaries. Trees grow tall but stay rooted, emphasizing the need for them to stay grounded. Rivers flow within their banks and show the importance of staying within their limits, bringing life to everybody. But the moment they overflow those banks, they can absolutely bring destruction and ruin. What am I telling you? Nature teaches us this. We have to find peace within the assignment God has given us. True peace comes from knowing you're operating within the limits God has assigned to you not trying to meet others' expectations. Now, we talked about, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to help you rightly identify the will of God. This is a part of growing. And I realize when we talk about growing and growth, these conversations and these messages this year, uh, this year you, many of you all that have been a part of Extraordinary Church for a little bit of a season, you know I'm, I'm a faith guy. And I just, I believe in faith. And this is part of growing in our faith. But how many of us would have testified? I know it's for me. At least it is for me. These messages that we've been hearing this year, you feel convicted. Ooh, he's stepping all on my toes. Well, I'm not. God is trying to grow us. God is trying to grow us. And it's important for us that we attend our ear to his instruction. Otherwise, if we remain fixed, something bad is going to happen. And I'm going to unpack that, but I want us to understand God is trying to grow us. Now, we talked about rightly discerning the will of God. I'm going to tell you there are certain things that we need to know the word instructs us to do, and we should do those things. And let me just tell you this. Obedience should always be the goal. Obedience should be the standard. Never compare the standard to, well, oh, so-and-so did it, and I can do that. Don't do that. I'm going to say that again because some of y'all look like y'all. Uh, don't, don't do it just because somebody else is doing it. Can I tell you? And listen, when you just worry about obedience and that being the result, you don't have to worry about the results. You leave the results up to God. Results are not our, are not our responsibility. Obedience is our responsibility. Praise God. So, okay, now that we understand, I'm going to give you the general, some general things that you know are the will of God, okay? This is beyond, I'm going to get to seeking your specific calling, focusing on the basic things, but we talked about this. It's the will of God for everybody to be thankful. For Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything give thanks. 
for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This is the will of God. There are some things in life we can't be thankful for, but there is never a season in life that we can't be thankful in. And some of us are so focused on the specifics of our assignment, trying to discern, do I go this way? Do I go that way? Do I go that way? You just need to take a moment and give God thanks. When you wait, I don't know about what you all do, but do you realize that there are cemeteries all over this place filled with people who would love to have our problem? Would love to have that backache. Would love to have this big head. Would love to have a little bit of debt. Would love to have a car that can barely make it. Would love to take public transit. We have reasons to be grateful. Don't wake up in the morning talking about something I wish I hadn't woke up. The devil is a liar. Do you know what the alternative is? You be six feet under, but by the grace of God, you are here in the land of the living. Can I tell you, he who began a good work is faithful to complete it. You might not be where you want to be, but God's not through with me yet. Look at your neighbor and tell him, God's not through with me. Praise God. Somebody else might have given up on you, but God didn't give up on you. As long as there's breath in your body, you've got a reason to praise him. That's why he said, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Didn't say perfect. Didn't say never made a mistake. Didn't say weren't confused. He just said, if you're alive, give him praise. We got to practice Thanksgiving. And when we don't practice Thanksgiving, we are out of order. So already, if we're trying to discern the will of God, obedience, be thankful in all things. In all things, not for all things, but in all things. Another thing that the scripture is clear about, we should do good works. Let your good deeds reflect the goodness of God. We overcome evil with, with good. Paul tells us in, uh, Paul tells, excuse me, not Paul, Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 12 through 15. I'm not going to read all of them, but just the, the last verse there, 15. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. You want to end an argument? Do good. You want to silence people? Just keep doing good. I was talking with another pastor today and he, we were just talking and he said, man, I'm, I'm trying to, to stay encouraged. People talking about me, people doing this. He just said, I don't defend myself. I just keep doing good. And by the grace of God, my testimony will be, will outlive the criticism and the negativity. Can I tell you, just keep doing good. Praise God. These are things you don't got to pray about. These are things that you ain't got to be like, oh, I don't know. Just do good. Just do good. Let me give you another one that we talked about. This is it. This is it. Praise God. Whether you're single or married, this applies to all of us. Whether you're old or young, flee sexual immorality. I got like two amens. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> flee. Doesn't say linger. Doesn't say chill. I told y'all last week, put on your J's and go. Flee the new balance. <laughs> Run to the kingdom. Not LeBron, praise God. No, but in all seriousness, we're to flee sexual immorality. God has called us to live a holy life. Staying away from sexual sin. This is clear in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Look at this. God's will is for you to be holy. So stay away from sexual sin. Verse 4. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor. Not in lustful passion. Like who? The pagans who do not know God and his ways. You don't need to pray about this. Your body was bought with a price. What you look at, what you listen to, who you spend time with, who you sleep with matters. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 
We need to flee sexual immorality. This is clear. And I know we live in an over-sexualized, sensualized world, and everybody can just do their own thing, and we hooking up and we connecting, but that's not the will of God. That's not the will of God. And I know people are like, oh, I can handle this. Look, I done been there, done that. I done dealt with the heartache and the confusion. You ain't fooling nobody. You ain't fooling nobody. So we, we, we'll talk about that. It's something else. It's to get planted and stay connected. It's the will of God that we flourish where we've been planted. God wants us to get planted and connected to him and the church community. That's why he says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season whose leaf shall also not wither, and whatever you do will prosper. Can I tell you, when you get planted and connected, you are prospering. Praise God. Thank you, Patricia. When you get connected and planted, or vice versa, when you get, vice versa, when you get planted and connected, you will thrive, you will flourish. Thank you, Andre. I'm going to say it again. Thank you, Jacqueline. When you get planted and connected, you're going to flourish. When you get planted and connected, you're going to flourish. Some of you have to stop settling for starving. Some of you have to stop settling for this disconnected, disjointed experience and realize it's the will of God for me to get planted and connected. I don't believe any of you are here by happenstance. I believe you're here by the hand of Almighty God. And since he has you here, in the perfect, acceptable, good will of God. Get planted in his will. Get planted in what God has for you. Get connected to the body of Christ. It makes a difference. Praise God. When we're fellowshipping, when we're, you know, I'm, I'm old, praise God. I'm 40. I said, when we are fellowshipping, when we're connecting, when we're hanging out, when we're vibing, I feel, let me, I, say, I feel young when I get around the young people. We vibe. When we fellowshipping, okay, when we're connecting, I feel churchy over here with Cassandra. When we, when we, when we fellowship, when we vibe, it makes a difference. You're getting connected. We went out, man, we had like 20 plus men. We threw, we threw axes. I'd never thrown an axe before in my life. Praise <laughs> We was having a good time, man. We laughing and, and Karen hooked us up. We had some jerk chicken and, and rice and mango salad and uh, just had a good time. We were connecting and it made a difference. Relationships were strengthened and people felt stronger together and we got dialogue going on. It makes a difference. People begin to flourish in all of that. I want to encourage you. When events are happening, flourish. You know how you get flourish. You want to know how you flourish? Invite somebody out. Praise God. And tell somebody, yo, let's go get coffee. If you got a Tim Hortons budget, tell them you got a Tim Hortons budget. Oh. oh. The Lord was getting me. I was about to crack a joke on Cassandra. <laughs> I ain't learned my ways. I'm still going to do it. <laughs> Praise God. She don't have a Tim Hortons budget. <laughs> Bougie. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Lord, don't let me drop my mic again, please. <laughs> Hold it with two hands. Praise God. No. <laughs> But if you got a Tim Hortons budget, say you got a Tim Hortons budget. Ain't nothing wrong with an apple. If you invite Alvin to get an apple fruit and some coffee, he'll be happy. We simple around here. Praise God. Well, you, we can have some potato wedges and some water. It'd be all good. Praise God. Sarah talking about that Tim Hortons pizza. I said, I refuse to eat that. That is not pizza. Know your limitations. Tell Tim Hortons to know their limitations. Stick to coffee and donuts, Tim Hortons. Get away from pizza. I need to preach to Tim Hortons for a moment. Praise God. 
Thank you, Jesus. The potato wedge is already struggling. We, my son will get him. I said, let me try them. The way he eat them up, they must be good. I was like, yeah. I was like, I was like where's the potato? Praise God. Anyway, they, what am I saying? These things are not optional. You don't have to pray about these things. And what I do want us to acknowledge, though, is that discerning which voice we hear is crucial to understanding our assignment and responsibility. If you are not able to discern rightly the voice, then you will listen to any voice and you'll be swayed by that voice, even though it might feel right in your heart, but it won't be God's will for your life. Let me just give you a news flash. You cannot trust your heart. The Bible says that the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? So the first thing I want to tell you is you have to make sure, hear me, the word of God is going to help you with discernment. If you want to know the voice of God, if you want to hear his voice, then read and immerse yourself in the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. In other words, Read what he's already spoken. Be enamored with that. But if we're not careful, we'll be enamored with every prophetic utterance, allegedly. And we'll think we got a word and it doesn't even line up with scripture. And then we wonder why we're misaligned. That's not the will of God. I want you to be aligned with the kingdom. Amen. So the first thing I want you to understand is remember that not every door that opens in your life is a door from the Lord. You've got to discern which doors are from him. You've got to ask yourself, is this good or is this God? Now, don't be mad if you look back in hindsight and like, why am I dealing with this? Why is this happening? And you didn't pray about it. If you didn't consult the word and see what the word has to say about it, then I'm, I'm telling you, God is a speaking God. He will guide you and direct you. But we have to realize that sometimes, sometimes, a good opportunity can be the enemy of God's best for your life. I don't know about you, but I don't want good. I want God's best. The second thing I want to tell you is that not every door, just because the door is shut, doesn't mean life is over. Can I tell you that when God closes one door, another door is going to open. I've learned that the most spiritual thing I can do in this season of my life, I am learning. I wish I knew this in my early 20s, how to say no. No, no to a great opportunity. No to an opportunity that I thought, oh man, this will be it. We're going to whoop, whoop. We're about to level up. I remember, I think I, I was telling Cassandra one time, I remember I had, uh, I was, I, the Lord will humble you. I remember I was, I, I've, I've been fortunate and blessed to preach in a number of spaces and places to thousands of people. One time, 34,000 people. Um, and I remember one time I was, I was, things were happening. I was preaching to a, a group of about eight to 10,000 and people were blowing me up. They're like, oh boy, you, you about to blow up. They were like, boo boo. They were like, the, the calls, the text messages, you're going to be preaching everywhere. This church, that church. They were like, we see you TD Jakes. And I was like, get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> I was praying. I was ready. I was ready, Jamie. I was ready. Praise God. I was even practicing on my hooping. <laughs> Can't hoop worth two cents. Praise God. I was ready. I was ready. And I preached. And the Lord, it, it was, it was, it was, you know, it turned out well. I was, people were like, oh man, this is great. Papa, they were like, boy, don't, don't forget me. They don't, they were like, you're moving on up. They were like, just stay, stay humble. Stay humble. You know, and I, was, I was waiting. I was like, man, for the phone call, boy, I was like, the people, they, they're going to be blown. I didn't get one invitation. Not one. Not one. Did y'all hear me? Not one. I was like, Lord, you could have given a brother a crumb. Some, I mean, I saw a little Zoom, a little summer. I would have done something for your Zoom at that point. This is before COVID. Thank you. Nothing. Nothing. My point in all that is I was getting ahead of myself. I was misfocused, misdirected. This is not about me and my, my assignment. That was not my assignment. I 
had to embrace the limitations. My assignment was to do what I did in front of that 8,000 people for the glory of God, and that was it. It was not my assignment to run off and preach to thousands or run around the country and preaching. I had to embrace my limitations. In spite of what everybody else had placed on me, in spite of what everybody else thought was best for me, Staying in the will of God is important. And so I had to learn that the hard way. This is why I told you, this is what I want to get to. And I'm going to hurry up here. This is why you've got to get this in your understanding. You have got to realize that the only way you are going to figure things out, I'm going to give you three things. And I got a chance to unpack the first one a little bit. So I'm going to try to move quicker here. But the thing that you've got to realize is you've got to live with a renewed mind. Somebody say renewed mind. I, I, I could preach this thing till I'm blue in the face. You wouldn't know it, praise God, because I got that melanin and I'm thankful for it. But you've got to understand, praise God. Help us, Lord. But we have got to renew our mind. Renew your mind by staying in God's word. Do you realize that Romans 12, 1 says this, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world. If you aren't careful, there are, notice the two spaces you're going to operate in. You're either going to be conformed to this world by its values, by its systems, by its education, by its agendas, by its politics, by its economics. You're either going to conform to that or you're going to be transformed. And the only way you're going to be transformed is by the renewing of your mind. You can fast your belly button off. You can pray and speak in tongues all day long. Not until you renew your mind. Not until you renew your mind with the word of God, will you be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? What am I saying? When you renew your mind, you're not walking according to the standards and the expectations and the values and the systems of this world, but you're walking according to your kingdom assignment. And you'll be like this. We were there, man. We went, we took like 60 of us to um, uh, Sight and Sound. Uh, which is a, a, a Christian theater. It's amazing. There in Lancaster, we went, we took the whole bus. Yeah, you can turn up. We had a good time. It was amazing. Praise God. And I had never been before. We went down there and they had done their first time. They had done a production on Daniel. And many of us are familiar with uh, Daniel and his story. And it was just phenomenal. Daniel had excellent spirit and God is using him. And, but it was in less than ideal circumstances. Even the three Hebrew boys, we talk about that, but they had such a faith and a confidence. Their mind was so consecrated and washed by the word that they wouldn't eat what the others ate. They just said, listen, we're not going to bow down and do what others do. And if that doesn't sit well with you, so be it. We know what the consequences are, but our minds are so made up and so confident in the God that we serve that we will honor him with our very life if that requires it. And they were done. They were done. And thank God the Lord stepped in and delivered them. But what am I telling you? You've got to renew your mind and change your perspective on what is happening. You can't look at things like everybody else looks at them. I preached this to you last week when you look at Acts 16. We talk about Paul and Silas. Midnight, at the midnight hour, at the midnight cry, they begin to praise and somebody will back me up. I'm just not talking, I'm not saying you got to come cast, but people are back you up and they'll rumble and we'll preach on praise and we'll do all that and we'll shake the foundations with praise and all of that's appropriate and I'm thankful but the reality of it is the earthquake came in other words the door is open the door is open and Paul and Silas could have left but they stay why did they stay because they had a renewed mind and an understanding that the kingdom is the agenda and it's not his will for me to leave. 
oh my God, we need to let this settle in for a moment. Because what if God's plan includes for you to be in a temporary season of a difficult place, not because you're meant to stay there, but because you're supposed to bring others out. Some of us, if we're going to grow, we have to choose to handle the assignment. When we sang, my life is not my own, don't be so quick to rebuke the prison when he's anointed you to be in the prison to bring somebody else out. God has you right where he wants you and you're so focused on, I gotta get out, I gotta do this, I gotta, no. Let the call settle you. Settle the call. Settle the call this afternoon. And watch the call of God settle you. What if that prison was an assignment, Paul? What if God's getting ready to take you through a season, a temporary season of incarceration? Not because you're going to stay incarcerated, but, you, but because you're getting ready to bring the prison guards out of the prison. Whew. Help us, Lord. If you don't renew your mind, don't. Trust your decision making. Train your mind. Praise God. Keep it aligned with God's thoughts. Keep your mouth speaking his words. Let your heart be surrendered unto the Lord. Let him shape your desires. Nurture and intentionally manage and steward relationships that reflect God's will. Okay, I got past that. The next thing I want to tell you. The second thing. So you got to have a renewed mind. Somebody say renewed mind. Prior to fact, you know what? You might be uncomfortable with this, but I'm not. I'm just, because I have to do this all the time. Praise God. I, I'm going to re just pray, Lord, renew my mind. Lay your hands on your head. Praise God. And just pray with me. Father, I declare you're going to renew our minds right now according to the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. Sanctify us with your truth, for your word is truth. We'll meditate on your word day and night and, pr uh, and pr prove good success, God. I declare that, Lord God. I come against thoughts that are not of you, O oh Lord God, and not from you. I declare this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to have a renewed mind. The second thing we have to do is we have to remain compliant and yielded. We got to be compliant and yielded, fam. If I, if I were going to shape something, if I were going to shape the future of something, if I were going to take something and turn it into something it was not, in order for me to transfer it from its current state into something that it could become, hear me, that object must be moldable. When I look at this pulpit, if I'm going to transform it from its current state into something that it could become, I have to cut it, I have to break it, I have to grind it, I have to melt it, I have to beat it, and then I, that's hard. Why? Because it's hard. Some of us can't grasp God's assignment for our lives because we are not yielded and compliant. We have made up our minds about what God will do with our lives. Here's the crazy thing. When, when did the, the clay ever look back to the potter and start telling the potter, you know what, I think I know what's best. I think I, I know what you ought to do with my life because I know what kind of clay I can be. Stop acting like you know what your life is supposed to become. I'm going to say that one more time. Stop acting like you know what your life is supposed to become. Some of you think you're great and you won't become anything until you realize you're nothing. And some of you think you're nothing and you don't realize you're positioned to be something great in the kingdom of God. 
But what you let you what you let happen is you've allowed enemies in your life and people in your life to surround you and confuse you and confuse your identity in God. But can I tell you, brokenness leads to greatness. I don't know what that could be with, I don't know what this could be without me cutting it up and breaking it and being hard with it and melting it. But can I tell you, brokenness leads to greatness. But, but this right here, this Play-Doh, it's got my fingerprints all over it. And the crazy thing is, I didn't have to squeeze it real hard. I just had to touch it. The moment it came out, it began to mold to my hands. I'm, I'm barely squeezing, fam. I can see my fingerprints all over it. Oh, don't, you, don't you feel God dealing with you right now? What am I telling you? Don't get tough. Get tender. Don't get bitter. Allow God to make you better. Don't get to the place where he has to hit on you and break you and tear you down and put you in the fire and melt you. No, 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 no. Just be moldable. Praise God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask our musicians to come, but... Lord, just give us a bunch of people in this house today that are, that are moldable, praise God, so that when the Father puts his hands on my heart, he doesn't have to crush me, praise God. All he's got to do is gently touch me. Whew. Is anybody hearing what's happening? But the problem is, some of us in this space have become so jaded, so bitter. Because you become bitter and you become jaded, God's not able to shape you like he used to. God's unable to mold you like he used to. You used to be so flexible, praise God. You would go wherever he sent you, thank you, Jesus. You'd do whatever he told you to do, and, and now you've been burnt. Now you've been wounded. Now you've been hurt. You've been run over. You've been, you've been lied on. You've been talked about. You've been taken advantage of. People left you, and you can't become what God assigned you to do or because your heart is hard. But somebody's here to just say, Lord, keep me tender. Whatever you want me to do, Lord, keep me tender. Don't let my heart get hard. I don't want to live in a place where you got to break me over and over and over again. I want to live in a place where I can be on the potter's wheel. Praise God. And every, every turn is a transformation in my life. Whew. Father, you're calling us back to the center. So that when you turn me, every touch can produce the kind of transformation. Hear me. You got to hear me. That's the problem when we get hard. A touch no longer transforms us. It used to be that a touch would be all it took. One touch from the master's hand. But now we've allowed things to be hard. Nobody can tell me what to do. I won't let anybody else hurt me again. I'm bitter. I'm jaded. Things didn't turn out the way I wanted them to. And because they didn't, I'm hard. I sang the songs, but my heart's not connected. I sang the songs, but I'm not yielded and compliant. I go to church, but I go through the motions. All the while, the masters just ready to touch you. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I wish somebody in this place would just take a moment and lift up their hands and begin to say, God, get me out of this place. Get me out of this jaded space. Get me out of this bitterness, this brokenness. God, this is not what I desire. I remember where my heart would leap within me, oh Lord Jesus, and I would run after you. Bring me back to that place in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, don't you feel the presence of the Lord drawing you? Don't you feel the presence of the Lord calling you? Don't you feel the hope of the Lord rising within you? Somebody's got to say, this is not what I want. Don't let my heart get hard, Lord. Whew. 
stay soft. You know what? The next thing I want to just mention pretty quickly. We talked about being yielded and compliant. But I'm going to help somebody. You got to know when to let it go. You got to know when to let it go. You got to know. I, I, I thought of this as I was finishing this today. I thought about Mike East, who was a, a prophet, just an elder in my life. And you all, if you were here, he referred to this song. It's by Kenny Rogers. And some of y'all like don't even know who Kenny Rogers is. It's okay, praise God. It's a notoriously popular song called The Gambler. And he says in these lyrics, he says, you got to know when to hold them. Got to know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. And you got to know when to run. You never count your money when you're sitting at the table. There'll be enough time. There'll be time enough for counting when the dealing is done. In other words, what he's simply saying is every situation in life requires a different response. Sometimes you hold on. Other times you let go. But that's the only way. Hear me. Letting go is the only way to move forward. And the ability to discern these moments is what ultimately helps you navigate the complexities of life effectively. Let me fast forward to the 21st century. I ain't seen the movie and I watched the clip of it. I, I don't even, I have never even listened to the whole song. But I listened to it today and, and didn't even listen to it in its entirety. The song about Frozen, Let It Go. I just said, let, 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 me, let, let me just make sure I got it right. Because all I've heard people saying is, let it go, let it go. And that's all I, that's, that's all I knew. I, was just, I, I heard the thing so much. I was singing the song I hadn't even heard. And I'm going to So I said, let me, let me listen to a moment of it. And she said, let it go. Let it go. I, I, I watched it on YouTube. She said, I can't hold it back anymore. I guess, she's go, I guess she maybe wanted to be warm, but I guess she had to be like a frozen princess or something frozen or something like that. Because as she was singing a song, you know, she's like, turn away and slam the door. I don't care what they're going to say. Let the storm rage on. You know, the cold never bothered me anyway. And as she said that, she's taken off her gloves. and Her cloak like flew off in the wind. And I was like, I don't know what she's smoking. Praise God, the cold. But she letting it go, all right. She letting it go. And the stuff was just flying, just gone, gone, gone. But here's what I know. As I listened to that and I saw the snowstorm and I'm preaching frozen. But the snowstorm that once represented chaos and fear now symbolized her unleashed power and beauty of living authentically. Y'all like, wow, he got all that from that. Why am I teaching this? Let it go. Some people here are spending their energy and resources trying to, hear me, extend and sustain a season that is supposed to end. That thing ended 10 years ago. And you over here resuscitating it. Talking about the good old days. Can I tell you? And I understand. I get it. I get it. Because if we don't know where we're going and we're like where we've been and we like where we've been, then I should do everything I can to extend this season because I'm not sure what my future holds. But some of us in this room today are unable to embrace what's next because we're trying to turn now into what used to be. Stop trying to turn now into what was 10 years ago and walk in what God has for you today. Why don't we stand? someone is in a season where the next phase of your assignment and responsibility will only be released when you let go of what has been maybe it was a relationship maybe it was a ministry maybe it was a door maybe it was a season of fruitfulness there's nothing more difficult or harder for a Christian who was fruitful in one place to recognize that God ain't in that anymore it doesn't mean that he wasn't there at that particular time in your past. It just means the season is changing. And a renewed mind and a moldable heart 
and the ability to let it go will bring you to a place where you do not judge prematurely. Here's the plan. Just keep your mind renewed in the word. Keep your spirit moldable. Don't become hard and act like you know it all. Stay open, stay moldable to God. And finally, don't be afraid to let go of a previous season. Why? Because he wants to take you from glory to glory. Hear me, this Christian life is not one of contraction and reduction. You and I might go through a season of loss. We may go through a season of, uh, I firmly believe in this, addition by subtraction. But it doesn't last forever. Anytime God ever takes us backwards or contracts or was lost, it doesn't last forever. He's getting ready to propel us and launch us into something greater. And I believe that. But what we have to do is understand the theology of his limitations. Do you know what I feel like is in this house and what will be an appropriate response? I don't know where people are today. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what you're facing. But can I tell you, you'll never go wrong when you surrender. When you surrender and let go of what God, uh, you let go of the past, you let go of your grip on the future, and you cling to Jesus. Right now, I feel like the Holy Ghost is dealing with somebody in this space. Why don't you just begin to lift your hands and begin to pray? We're going to begin to play and we're going to begin to worship and I'm going to begin to invite you to this altar. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're up against, but I know the Lord knows and I want you to know that he's able and eager to meet you right where you are. This altar is open and it's an opportunity for all of us to come and pray. If you'd like to come and pray, I want to invite you to do so. If there's something, if you want to respond to the word and you want to respond to the presence of God, I feel like this is one of those moments where it's a personal time where God, I I, I gotta lean in, Jesus. I gotta, I gotta lock in and I gotta surrender. There's I've been holding on to some things. I've, I've got to renew my mind and get a fresh perspective. I've got to be get moldable. I've become too hard. I've become too fixed God I've, I've become too critical I've become too judgmental I, I've become too settled in my ways God and I've got to let go I'm talking about stuff that happened three years ago five years ago ten years ago I'm letting it go today by faith I'm not going to pick it back up I'm going to leave it at this altar I'm going to quit picking up the hurt I'm going to quit picking up the harmful things that were said and I'm going to begin to just say God I'm letting go by faith faith. I'm going to begin to love again. I'm going to begin to serve again. I'm going to begin to be grateful again and have my joy restored again. Somebody in this place, just begin to love them. And if you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you. Come to this altar. Repent of your sins and God will forgive you and cleanse you. He'll fill you with his spirit. If you want to come and get a brand new start, I want to let you know, come to this altar. If you have something else you want to pray about come to this halter we'll pray with you and we'll watch God move in your life in the name of Jesus